first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you today. Hello, my name is Brian Lam. I'm a PhD student from the Diamandis Lab, and I will be presenting a recently published article in Nature Communications called Topographic Mapping of the Glioblastoma Proteome Reveals a Triple Axis Model of Intratumoral Heterogeneity. Glioblastoma is the most common brain cancer amongst adults with a dismal median survival of 15 months despite multimodal therapy, including chemotherapy and maximal resection. One reason for this dismal prognosis is due to its intratumoral heterogeneity, highlighted by this H&E tumor cross-section. The diversity in the regional biology makes this disease so deadly and difficult to treat. Here, we have a cluster of rapidly growing tumor cells and to sustain themselves, they secrete endothelial growth factor and vascular endothelial growth factor, which promotes the formation of microvascular proliferations or newly formed blood vessels. These blood vessels de deliver oxygen, nutrients, and anti-apoptotic survival factors to accelerate and maintain the growth of the tumor. However, these newly formed blood vessels are weak and tend to fail, leading to areas of hypoxia. Subsequently, necrosis occurs and cells move away from this hypoxic region, forming what is known as palisading cells around necrosis. While this may seem like a positive thing, this area of hypoxia gives these cells the unique property of chemo and radiotherapy resistance. Another reason why this tumor is so difficult to treat is that the tumor infiltrates into normal brain tissue, making it difficult for the surgeon to remove all of the tumor without removing large sections of the brain. Traditionally, glioblastoma was considered a homogeneous mass, and bulk profiling was performed to uncover the most prevalent pathways and develop therapies against them. What we know now is that this approach has not been successful as there have been no improvements to clinical outcomes in the past 40 years. One issue is that when we do bulk profiling approaches, we mask this intratumoral heterogeneity and lose the subtle biological differences from these tumor microenvironments. So instead, we want to take a different approach. We want to find targets within the various tumor microenvironments, for example, if we are able to find targets for microvascular proliferations, we may be able to stop the growth of the tumor. Or if we are able to find a target for brain infiltration, then the surgeon would be able to remove larger sections of the tumor without removing normal brain tissue. Thus, by combining these different drugs together into a drug cocktail of sorts, we may be able to improve the long-term outlook on this deadly disease. However, to target these different tumor microenvironments, we need to gain a better understanding of the biology within these regions. The community has been working towards this goal, and in the landmark IV Glioblastoma Atlas project, they excise different hallmark features of glioblastoma that I mentioned previously and use transcriptomics to identify upregulated genes within the various regions. While the IV gap studied RNA, we want to take a complementary approach by studying proteins within these different regions. Proteins are the molecular machinery that drive nearly all the function within a cell. They're also the most common drug targets, which aligns with our goal of identifying regional therapeutic candidates. So the hypothesis is that there are spatial differences in glioblastoma biology that can refine our therapeutic strategies. The aim of this project is to delineate the proteomic profiles of glioblastoma hallmark histomorphological features. Here is a schematic outline of our project. First, we assembled a cohort of 20 patients and five additional for validation. All tumors were independently annotated by licensed neuropathologists. Tumors were curated to ensure they contained at least three histomorphological features. We also obtained metadata, including age, sex, resection location, and genomic annotations. After acquiring these tumors, we then took formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tumors and sectioned them for laser capture microdissection. This is an H&E section, and we encircle the area of interest guided by our neuropathologist annotations, and use a laser to excise the region of interest while being mindful to avoid areas such as blood and necrosis. 
These excised regions were then collected for mass spectrometry-based proteomics. In total, we were able to obtain 86 samples and we generated technical mass spectrometry duplicates for a total of 172 proteomic analyses. Utilizing bottom-up or shotgun proteomics, we identified approximately 4,500 proteins and approximately 3,000 proteins per sample. We also performed outlier tests and identified two outliers which were removed from further analyses. After performing mass spectrometry-based proteomics, we did bioinformatic analyses to demonstrate that they, recapitulate, that they recapitulate some of the biology within these regions, which would also highlight that we excise the correct regions. First, we compared it with the well-established anatomical reference set from the Ivy Gap and demonstrated a good proteogenomic concordance of approximately 0.4, which is similar to other proteogenomic studies. We also performed gene set enrichment analysis, which highlighted a number of expected processes. LE was enriched for gene ontology terms related to neuronal systems. IT, a mixture of normal brain tissue and infiltrative glioblastoma stem cells, was associated with neuronal systems and stemness pathways. CT was enriched for differentiation and growth, while the pan region was enriched for hypoxia-related pathways. And finally, MVP was associated with angiogenesis. Together, this suggests that our proteomic profiles recapitulates aspects of histomorphological niches. After validating that our samples recapitulated the expected biology, we wanted to identify some potential regional therapeutic targets. We performed differential expression analysis in combination with literature searches to identify understudied proteins as potential candidates for further validation. One such study, one such understudied protein is A kinase anchoring protein 12, which was found to be enriched within the pan region. Here is an HNE image highlighting the pan region. We also performed orthogonal validation in an external cohort by immunohistochemistry to highlight ACAP12's regional specificity. One such potential target is CD276, which was found to be enriched within tumor vasculature. Similarly, we performed immunohistochemistry on a separate cohort and demonstrated increased translation within the tumor. Vas within tumor vasculature, but not normal brain vasculature. CD276 is an interesting target because it is a cousin of CD274 or PDL1, which is the famous immunotherapy target for lung cancer and melanoma. Furthermore, we utilized the XGBoost machine learning algorithm to identify proteogenomically concordant processes then hierarchical clustering of the tumor tissue, CT and PAN, based on these pathways, highlighted two biologically distinct clusters. Cluster one was associated with processes involved in stem cells, the GBM TCGA proneural pathway, and MIC targets, while cluster two was associated with cell migration, KRAS targets, and the GBM TCGA mesenchymal pathway. Interestingly, PAN and CT samples were intermixed between these two clusters, but upon closer inspection, these samples could be further separated with the hypoxia pathway, which is demonstrated in this 3D scatter plot of single sample gene set enrichment analysis scores. Together, this suggested a triple axis separation of tumor tissue. To further highlight the clinical importance of these different pathways, we ranked 100 tumors from the Clinical Proteomic Tumor Analysis Consortium, CPTAC, based on their KRAS scores, and notably, the KRAS tumors had worse survival outcomes with a p-value of 0.032. Furthermore, we wanted to highlight the drug susceptibilities or resistances for these different pathways. Here we use the Cancer Cell Line Encyclopedia which has performed transcriptomic analysis on 33 GBM cell lines and performed functional profiling utilizing 330 different compounds. To highlight the drug susceptibility of these pathways, we ranked the cell lines by the gene set enrichment scores for the MIC pathway, for example, and compared the drug sensitivities of the 330 compounds between the high MIC targets and the low MIC target cell lines. Then we use volcano plots to highlight therapeutic sensitivities and resistances for the triple axis pathways. 
For example, this volcano plot highlights differences in drug sensitivities. On the right, uh, these drugs are able to target cell lines, uh, target cells enriched for the MYC pathway. But interestingly, none of the tested compounds were able to target cell lines enriched for the KRAS pathway. Similarly, none of the tested compounds were able to target the hypoxia-enriched cell lines. However, this was not unexpected, as hypoxic cells are known to possess chemoresistance. To summarize, we highlighted a triple-axis model of glioblastoma tumor tissue, where some regions are driven by hypoxia-related pathways, others are enriched for CMYC, which is associated with proliferation, and finally, KRAS axis associated with migration. In addition, this unique resource has been made publicly available by creating a bioinformatic portal. Here, researchers and the general public are able to perform different analyses, including volcano plots, box plots, and gene set enrichment analysis to further study these proteomic profiles. Together, the hope is that this knowledge dissemination will accelerate the understanding of GBM biology. We also have some future directions for this project. Previously, we were able to highlight the enrichment of ACAP12 within PAN cells. However, I was also able to show that ACAP12 is present in vitro. Upon decreasing oxygen levels, ACAP12 expression increases. Here, we have a Western blot in different cell conditions. With decreasing oxygen levels and a dense atometry bar graph, highlighting a two-fold increase across three different cell lines upon going from 21% oxygen to 0.2% oxygen. We intend to utilize phosphoproteomics to interrogate the phosphoproteome of 8-cap-12 dependencies in hypoxia. This will allow us to study some of the post-translational modifications of hypoxic cells. Finally, I am not the only individual who contributed to this project, so I'd like to thank all of these individuals by helping me in both large and small ways as well as thank you for listening to my talk. I've been honored to speak in front of you today. Please, do, and remember, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.